D-S-L-R Film Noob. All right, guys, this is less of a review and more of kind of an overview of the 5D Mark IV. Uh, as a 5D Mark III shooter, I just kind of wanted to go over a few things so you guys kind of have an idea of what you're getting into. The build on this is a bit different than the 5D Mark III. Uh, the top feels a little more plasticky than the original 5D Mark III, and the grip actually does feel a little bit better. The rubber seems a little nicer than the 5D Mark III. They've changed the battery grip down here, and I haven't seen anybody really talk about that, but they've added this little notch right here, and you can see on the battery flip out, there's actually a little push button in there, which may require a different battery grip than previously in order to go with the 5D Mark IV. I would have hoped that uh, we could just go ahead and get uh, my old battery grip off my 5D Mark III and put it on here, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. Uh, if you're using generic batteries, be prepared for a few questions in the startup menu. Uh, the camera gets a little angry at you for whatever reason. As far as the screen goes, it looks very nice. They've added a touch screen and you can pretty much do everything from the touch screen access and play with any menus. You can also change focus positions in live view mode. And of course in 4K and 1080p video mode, you can shoot um, using the focus select by pushing different parts of the screen, which is actually pretty nice. You can see the little focus icon pop up here and of course it does work uh, otherwise they've not changed the layout very much there is one new little piece right here and uh, the touching of this wheel for silent volume mode doesn't seem to work in video like it did previously so I don't know what's going on with that, but the 5D Mark III did have that sort of silent operation mode where you could actually hit this touch wheel and change the interface. I may be wrong on that. I'll have to do some more reading in the manual, but uh, that was something I kind of liked about the 5D Mark III. Also, the interface for the focus on this guy is a little bit different. Uh, in the 5D Mark III, you only really got the red dot in the center. Uh, this now gives you red dots on all the focus points, which is a very nice upgrade. Uh, other than that, pretty much what you would expect out of a top-end camera, burst mode, 7 frames per second, does eat up the buffer pretty fast. And the only way I'm capable of shooting 4K on this is with fairly high-end cards. I've either had to use my old computer bay cards or these... 95 meg a second cards uh, from SanDisk, which are capable of keeping up with this. You can buy those for about $60, so 128 gigs, it's roughly uh, 4 gigs a minute. So keep that in mind if you're going to try and shoot 4K video with this thing. It is a little unruly. The Motion JPEG, not the greatest. Also, just in preliminary shooting, I haven't been able to get anything to Lightroom yet because obviously there's no uh, Kodak support for the RAW files in Lightroom. Uh, but the images I've seen and the test files I've looked at as far as JPEG go seem to indicate that there is... Uh, more pronounced more a on the images I'm getting out of this and that's most likely due to the pixel count so Nothing to get too excited about 30 megapixels more pixels more more a and uh, That's about it. Uh, I'll add more to the written review as I continue to play around with this camera But hopefully that helps a few of you who are in the market for an upgrade to your 5d mark 3 your 6d or an older 1D body and want to kind of get some of those new features.